Hi, and welcome to CloudSec 2021. I hope you're enjoying the show. My name is Kevin, and I'm an Associate Security Solutions Architect from Amazon Web Services. Today, I'll be sharing about seven things DevOps needs to know about container security. During this session, I'll be providing you with some practical steps that you can use to integrate security throughout the whole pipeline to improve your security posture and ensure you deploy containers securely. Now, without further ado, let's get started. I'd like to start with an introduction to the concept of DevSecOps. Like what the name suggests, it's the integration of security into the DevOps pipeline. But I'd like to stress, it's not simply just technology and tools, but it's also cultural, cultural philosophies and practices that improve security throughout the pipeline. DevSecOps is achieved by integrating and automating the enforcement of preventive, detective, and responsive security controls into the pipeline. There are four main tenets of DevSecOps. The first is to test security as early as possible to accelerate feedback. You also want to prioritize preventive security controls to stop bad things from happening. And when deploying a detective security control, you want to ensure that it has a, com it has a complementary responsive security control to do something about it. And finally, automate, automate, and automate. Now, why is DevSecOps so important? What's important to remember is that the time and money needed to fix a vulnerability in the code increases the, more, the further down you go into the DevOps pipeline. For example, it is very easy for developers to fix a vulnerability before they get committed to the repository. In contrast, can you imagine how much time and money you would need to spend fixing a vulnerability for code that has made its way into production? Hence, by implementing security throughout the pipeline, DevSecOps helps you catch vulnerabilities early, saving you time, money, and resources throughout the software development lifecycle. So this is the pipeline that we, are, we will be securing today. The diagram will use AWS code services, as that is what I'm comfortable with, but these seven principles apply to open source tools as well. So the first thing that DevOps needs to remember about container security is that it starts at the source stage with writing clean code. So what threats can be addressed at this stage? The first is exposed secrets. In 2020, Digital Shadows, a digital risk protection firm, scanned GitHub, GitLab, and Pastebin and found 800,000 access keys and secrets. Things like database keys, cloud provider keys, tokens and keys for online services. Can you imagine how damaging it could be if your secrets were somehow leaked because they were committed to a repository? The second is vulnerabilities in code. According to Secure Code Warrior, 21% of breaches were caused by software vulnerabilities in code. So this is insecurely written code that leads to things like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, broken authentication, amongst other vulnerabilities. Now, how do we mitigate exposed secrets? What you need to do is you must ensure that secrets are not pushed into code repositories. This doesn't just include not writing secrets into code, but it also means that you don't write secrets into a configuration file that is pushed into a repository. We'll, we'll discuss later how to handle these secrets, but in the meantime, Git Secrets is a great, easy to use open source tool that prevents you from committing secrets and other sensitive information to a Git repository. Now, how do we address vulnerabilities in code? Like what I mentioned earlier, DevOps is more than just tools. It's a cultural philosophy as well. And you will need to train your developers to write code in a secure way in order to achieve DevSecOps. After developers write secure code, you can then use tools that inspect code and notifies developers of any potential vulnerabilities. Tools that help you with this include things like Amazon Code Guru Reviewer, uh, Sonar Cube, and Hadolint. Number two is to use hardened container images. Hardening is a process of limiting potential weaknesses and reducing vulnerabilities. Hardened images are configured in a way to protect the image against threats like malware, insufficient authorization, and remote intrusion. A hardened container image is more secure than a standard image. 
Organizations like CIS provide hardened images for container operating systems, and you should use them. Build so what security teams should do is that they should build pipelines that use these hardened images to create standardized base images for your containers. Then they will need to ensure that, the, that teams across the company have access to these hardened base images and enforce their use as well. Another threat to containers are attacks on repositories or packages used in the software development process. When building containers, DevOps teams need to pull container images and store them. However, the repository that they pull from or store their images in could be compromised. Criminal groups target Docker Hub, GitHub, and other shared repositories by using container images that include malicious scripts or tools. For example, earlier this month, researchers discovered that a crypto jacking group had deployed malicious container images onto Docker Hub. The use of this image allowed the threat actor to compromise the container and then use it for crypto mining. Furthermore, container applications often include components from a mix of private and public sources. An attacker can upload a compromised version of a module, causing developers to download the bogus latest version. For example, earlier this month as well, three JavaScript libraries uploaded to the official NPM package repository were unmasked as crypto mining malware. So to resolve this, you will need to secure your images and artifacts. Let's talk about securing images first. Downloading com container images from untrusted sources and vendors can introduce security vulnerabilities in containers. Make sure that images downloaded are from online platforms which are trusted and secure. Furthermore, you should also always use your own private and secure repository to store images. A private repository allows you to maintain control over access to the image. Finally, you want to enforce image use permissions. Services or tools that could help you with this include Amazon Elastic Container Registry or Docker Registry. You then want to secure your artifacts as well. How, what, how you can do this is to use a private repository to store these packages, and then you want to validate and approve of packages deemed safe by the security team and only allow developers to use these approved packages. Tools like AWS Code Artifact and JFrog Artifactory are very useful here. Now, number four, you want to test your containers throughout the pipeline. You want to test your containers throughout the pipeline for security flaws rather than just leaving testing to the end. Here are three different testing approaches that you can use at different stages of the pipeline. The first is container image scanning. This helps identify software vulnerabilities in your container images. The second is Static Application Security Testing, or SAST tools. These help analyze source code or compiled versions of code to help you find security flaws. Finally, there's Dynamic Application Security Testing, or DAST. These are automated tools that scan web applications, normally from the outside, to look for security vulnerabilities such as cross-site scripting, SQL injection, command injection, or insecure server configuration. DEST is normally done after an application has been deployed to a staging environment. Number five, manage secrets securely. Earlier, I talked to you about how you shouldn't put secrets into code. So where should you store them? You should put them in a dedicated secret manager. So instead of hard coding secrets into your application, your application should be configured to call the secrets manager and access the appropriate secret when it needs them. You should also rotate your secrets regularly. Some secrets managers do allow you to automate that process. Tools that can help you in this, in this, for this point will be things like AWS Secrets Manager, HashiCorp Vault, or Beyond Trust. Number six, ensure observability in production. Visibility in your containers is essential because it allows you to detect security issues and quickly respond before they disrupt the customer experience. But Monitoring containers can be challenging. The first challenge is that containers are ephemeral. They are quickly provisioned and quickly destroyed. This can make it a struggle to track changes, especially in complex systems with high churn. The second is that containers share resources. Resources like memory and CPU are shared across one or more hosts, making it difficult to monitor resource consumption on the physical host. 
This makes it difficult to get a good indication of the container performance or application health. Third is insufficient tooling. Traditional monitoring platforms may not provide sufficient insight into the metrics, logs, and tracers needed to monitor and troubleshoot container health and performance. How do we resolve this problem? You want to implement the right observability tools, things like Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, the Elk stack, Grafana and Prometheus, Amazon CloudWatch, and Amazon DevOps Guru will be very helpful here. Furthermore, you must always remember to observe the network as well. Amazon App Mesh was also helpful here. Finally, you do not want to forget alerts. There's no point configuring your environment and getting visibility, but you don't get notified when something bad happens. Now, after you've configured visibility into your environment, the next step is to test with chaos engineering. You won't know how secure you are unless you test. So chaos engineering allows you to test your system to, to see if your incident response process is up to scratch and validate your application architecture. Now, finally, the last point is to remember to secure the pipeline as well. Remember that your CI CD pipeline is not a thing into, a, into itself. It is a collection of microservices that need to be secured as well. So this, this includes things like ensuring least privilege for IAM permissions and roles attached to the pipeline and pipeline components, enforcing least privilege between pipelines, using infrastructure as code to maintain and update pipelines, and to implement detective controls into your pipelines as well. So that, that covers the seven top things that I wanted to share with you. Let's see how, that, how well it looks like to implement everything. So this is what our original pipeline looks like now. Let's see what happens when we add when when we add some secret scanning and code scanning. And then the next step is to build a hardened image pipeline. After that, we move we want to use a private registry. So we replace Docker Hub with Amazon ECR. After that, we add a bunch of scanning tools, container scanning, SAS, and DAS tools throughout the whole pipeline to scan our container through the whole pipeline. We add secret storage so we don't need to store secrets into code. We add some monitoring to ensure that we have our visibility of the production. We add pipeline security tools to secure the pipeline. So that is just one example of how we can secure a, a CI CD pipeline and implement DevSecOps. But apart from the tools I shared, there are also lots of different reference architectures out there that will fit your workload and I'm sure you can find the right one for you. So in summary, the seven things that, you, that DevOps needs to know about container security are to write clean code, to use hardened container images, to secure your images and artifacts, to test your containers throughout the pipeline, to manage secrets securely, ensure observability in production, and finally, remember to secure the pipeline. I really encourage you to implement DevSecOps and secure your DevOps pipeline today to begin shipping code more quickly and more securely as well. Thank you for watching my session today. You may reach out to me at the email in the slide above if you have any questions, and I hope you enjoy the rest of CloudSec 2021. Thank you.